introduction so good morning everybody welcome to this friday's webinar from Annika digital uh, it's myself and stanley playing host today and i'm very pleased to welcome mark good morning mark good morning all uh, so Mark's going to be talking about writing content for the web, a non-technical approach. Now, for the regulars of our Friday morning webinars, I think we're on about our 50th now. It's nearly a year since we first started doing these, which means it's nearly a year since we went into lockdown. We start by doing a couple of polls. Um, also, if any of you haven't been before, we will be sending the recording out and you can get the handout top right. So there's a little a button top right. Also, please say hi in the chat. Um, and if you want to ask questions in the chat, um, please do. Um, I'll try and answer some questions as we go along. And then we'll have time at the end for questions and answers. So while we're just waiting for a few more people to join, let's uh, start with our first poll. Um, and I'll, I'll have to read it out and tell you the answers um, while people are polling so that the people on the video know what we're talking about. So are you or someone else in your company writing content for your marketing? So there's a couple of no questions, uh, replies, and then there's some yeses. So no, I'm a student, unemployed, or not in a role that requires content creation. Uh, no, but we are planning to create content very soon. Yes, I'm responsible for creating content. Yes, someone else is responsible for creating content. Yes, we have more than one person creating content. Yes, we use an external agency or freelancer to help us create content. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Over half of you are actually responsible for writing content, uh, which means you've got a very informed audience, Mark. So you might have to up your game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Even about, more. <laughs> Even more. And about a third of people have got more than one person. So it looks like um, most of the people here are actually um, either in that team or are writing content themselves. So that's that's very, very useful. Uh, and then let's go to the second poll. Um, this is more about what type of organic and free content do you create? So there's lots of choices here. So please tick more than one. So um, I'll just start that poll in. So I'm creating website content about for my products and services website content for your blog, other content on your website, such as white papers, guides, articles, etc. social media posts and content, other line on content for third party sites, such as guest blogging, PR, digital PR, etc. Uh, offline content, brochures, printed articles, published content, books, uh, magazine content, etc. Uh, visual or multimedia content, such as videos, webinars, and image based content, uh, infographics, data-driven stuff, uh, audio content such as podcasts, radio, which is the up-and-coming thing at the moment. And we've even got Clubhouse coming along as well, which is audio as well. So interesting com a lot we've got here today. So the most popular answer is content for the website, which is about 20%. So that includes products and service content. 17% um, writing for the blog and 11% is writing other website content. So I think if you add that all together, over half of you are writing content for the website. Uh, another 20% are writing social media posts and content, which is what we'd expect. Uh, that's really interesting. 12% um, are writing content for offline, and another 12% are writing visual or creating visual or multimedia content, uh, which I think is going to gradually grow. And five of you are actually writing, uh, doing audio content, which is very interesting. Uh, we think that I did my first guest podcast a, a couple of weeks ago. So that's uh, definitely the way things are moving. So um, I just pass over to uh, Mark now. I'm going to turn my um, camera off and my uh, mic off. If you see my mic come on, uh, Mark, then you know I'm about to ask you a question. Um, but I'll only interject if somebody's asked something really pertinent in the chat or if I think there's something that needs a little bit more explanation. But um, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good morning, everyone. Um, just a couple of opening points. Um, very interesting, in those poll results. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to say was that a lot of this will be 
based around um, stuff for sites such as landing pages, blogs, etc. Um, I do have uh, experience of writing for offline as well. Um, so I think you'll find a lot of this can be applied uh, through all those different channels. Uh, as Anne said, please do ask questions as, as we go along. Um, and, and about the uh, an informed audience, which is great, because I'm hoping that'll mean there's a few more conversation points that we can get into. Um, and it would be remiss of me to not point out that uh, we're actually doing this on a palindromic date. So on the 12th of 02, 2021, as a language person, I noticed that that's uh, the same forwards and backwards. So first free tidbit of the day. So getting on to uh, a little bit about me. I've got uh, just over 25 years of marketing experience. Most of that has been in marketing communications in a variety of roles. Uh, a lot of that has covered events management, campaign and print management. Uh, also been quite heavily involved in a lot of market research and analysis, uh, which is a, an aspect I've, I've enjoyed a lot. It appeals to my numerical part of my brain. Uh, I've worked in both private and public sector and, and seen the pros and cons of both. Uh, similarly, I've also worked in very small SMEs, uh, some medium enterprises, and also in the uh, in the corporate world. Uh, I've been both sides of the fence. I've worked both in agency and, and in clients. Uh, I've got uh, just about six months now at Annika. Uh, my degree was in languages, well, foreign languages to be precise, but I've always had a, a, a strong interest in language. And outside of work, uh, I have a quite keen interest in astronomy. Um, and my reference there is to the photograph called the pale blue dot, which I won't talk about now, but I advise you to Google if you haven't before. Please don't go and look at it. It is one of the most striking photos I've ever seen. Um, Talking of striking photos, uh, that's me on the uh, in the pic, as you might have guessed, uh, taking a couple of years on a holiday in Scotland, um, in Oban, and the large island that you can see just in the background is the is Mull. So just to give you any geographical reference that you'd like. So enough about me. You may have seen this before, but these are some of the uh, companies and brands that we work with. As you can see, a variety of uh, sectors and sizes there. Uh, and I think I did a, a, a quick uh, sum earlier. I work on uh, about six of those clients that you can see there in with wearing slightly varying hats. So. What we're going to go through, and hopefully you've seen this in the uh, in the our promotional copy, uh, a little bit of marketing communications theory, then how getting started, but putting some basics in place first. Then once you've got underway, keeping on writing. Uh, pay attention to the details. Um, not a lot of people, not many people like talking about grammar or even hearing about it, but I'm going to touch a bit on that. Uh, it has become a uh, a much more sensitive topic uh, over the last few years. Uh, a few tips about proofreading and publishing, and then, as it says, thoughts for the next steps and, and where to go from here. So, as I say, a little bit of theory to start with. What is the purpose of communication? And I'm not talking about a definition. And, and in my research for this, uh, I've came across this quite simple um, but um, comprehensive uh, structure to inform, which we all get, to express feelings, emotions, fairly obvious, to imagine, and this is where you're starting to get a bit more interesting for me because it's about putting your imagination down, but it's also encouraging imagination, which leads on to influence. And I think about, you know, uh, if you're selling on a website, you're not just selling the product. You you are getting people to imagine an experience that they would have or how they would benefit from your product, whatever that product might be. Uh, and the last one there, to meet social expectations, that refers to uh, small talk, joking, teasing, bantering, etc. But it's uh, it's essential part of the glue that holds all the bricks together. 
So I just want you to bear those in mind as we as we go along. I'm not going to go into in depth in, on on any of those points. Um, and a point that is often made but easily forgotten: uh, your website is open 24/7, 365 days a year. So it's always talking to people. But does it also listen? And by listening, I don't mean just do you have a contact us or a, a contact form or email us or anything like that. Is the language encouraging people to respond and by responding that might be to to read on further to do more research click purchase whatever it might be but it's does it have a interactive element running underneath what you're writing so second part on the theory and this as i say there is just one very very thin slice of a topic that you can actually get a full degree in but this is a model that I have found extremely useful uh, ever since I discovered it in my uh, CIM uh, training probably nearly 20 years ago. Um, you, you will start with any piece of communication, you will start with a source, which could be a single person, but maybe more than one. Uh, that source will generate or have in mind an intended message, uh, which they will then encode through various means they will then transmit through a channel in this case we're talking about the web but it applies to print uh offline uh, all sorts as well you'll have the intended receiver who will then undertake their own decoding and they will then formulate in their minds the received message and the point of this is that because of noise that exists throughout the system the message that you send out is not always the received message. In fact, it's fair to say very rarely the received message. And the noise that it refers to there could be any even physical noise. For example, if we had a glitch in the transmission this morning, um, but it, it's, it's also other distractions, uh, prejudices, other beliefs, all that kind of thing that can uh, distort what you're actually trying to put across. Uh, for those that work more visually, there it is in a model. A couple of points on this. Uh, it refers to the noise uh, hitting the send of the message in the receiver. I, I would contest that it also can affect the encoding and the decoding. Uh, it, is, it is possible and present throughout. Uh, and the feedback, which I didn't have in my list, uh, but that is also susceptible to uh, noise and distortion in the message. But a very, very useful model for almost any form of communication. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, maybe a few marriage counselors have used it in their time as well, because it's um, once you understand the complications that can occur, uh, it, it, it puts things in a very different light, I would say. Uh, an example, um, in my days, this used to be called Chinese whispers. I don't know if that's still uh, an acceptable term, but uh, I remember hearing about this at school. And apparently, uh, according to my research, it, there is uh, there is some uh, historical uh, uh, truth to, to this. Um, but the, the the famous command, I think it was during World War One, that was sent down the line was to send reinforcements. We're going to advance, which uh, through various um, uh interpretation and and various people uh turned into sin three and four pence we're going to a dance uh i'd like to think that's true but also i'd like to think that uh it was uh, it was questioned back at base before uh, any money was dispatched so getting started and we are going right back to some basics here we are starting if you'll pardon the pun with a blank page and uh building from there so again for those that prefer, prefer something visual uh this is a fairly good model that i found that uh explains the process there are there are parts here that i would um agree fully with and other bits that i would add in um but four fairly distinct stages pre-writing which i take mainly as research but it may be note jotting uh discussions brainstorming etc Drafting, which, as you can see, it points out is an iterative process. Um, editing, again, I would say that there there is uh, an element of iteration, perhaps not as much during the, the, the drafting. And then publishing, 
fairly obvious you have to you have to get out there what you've uh, what you've put uh, put on paper or put on screen so um i will uh, i will refer to this as we go along but you'll see how it uh, how it tallies with my slides so getting started my first point would be resist the temptation to rush in uh when i i i face this every time whenever i'm given a brief uh, the mind will start firing off and thinking, oh, yes, we could talk about this and what about that, etc., which is fine. Uh, but I would I would have a pen and paper to hand and scribble those points and thoughts down immediately. Uh, you don't know which of those will become useful or not uh, as you go along, but uh, make use, take advantage of that initial a uh, burst of uh, inspiration if you get it. Um, if you don't, not a problem because we will then get into the research and planning that will form the foundation. So I would say that uh, whether it's on your own or in a group, uh, I would brainstorm the topic for how you're going to approach it, uh, the terminology you're going to use, uh, and how widely and how deep you're going to explore it. Some of this might be defined by a brief. Some of it might be defined by existing comment that you need to either shorten or lengthen or just about hit the same but rewrite. Um, but it's important to know where you're going to head with all of this. Otherwise, um, you know, it's the old analogy. You don't set out on your road trip without a map or a sat nav. You never know where you'll end up. Uh, one useful uh, extra starting point, I would say, is check out your competition, which hopefully you're doing uh, uh, already. But check out what they're saying, uh, but also how and why they're saying it in a certain way. And we'll come on to uh, tone of voice, etc., a, a little bit later. Um, but look at look at how they present it physically, how they break things down on page, how the pages work together. But what is the underlying current in what they are? Uh, what they've got there, and also what are they what are they not saying? Build a reference framework, uh, ideally on paper, and I, and I mean on paper. There, write it down. I, I always find that writing stuff down, uh, I just remember it better. Um, and especially if you're working in a group, set that framework so that everybody is starting out with the same understanding. Uh, and importantly, set yourself a deadline and stick to it. If you're writing something for your own uh, website, then then great. If you're working in an agency and you've got a deadline, then that will almost certainly be imposed anyway. But one of the temptations, certainly with uh, copywriting, is to keep going back and refining it and refining it. And eventually, you'll get to uh, the point where either you drift away too far from what uh, your framework says, or uh, you'll find that you've made it too fiddly and and you know difficult to understand uh the 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 artist never knows quite when to finish the painting so often it's a case of uh impose some time limits rather than any others so who are your audience i would encourage you to think of both about about who they are but also where they are in their journey and by journey that might be a uh, a buying journey uh, it could be uh, an educational journey. It could even be what we would say is you know, a personal journey. It would depend on uh, where they are at, what they're looking for, and also what you're providing. But think about where they are at various stages. And ask yourself, how well do you know them? Uh, we talk about uh, personas an awful lot, um, and it's important to keep those up to date and as complete as possible. But also, how well do you know what they need to know? And it goes back to where they are on the journey. What are they actually looking for when they come to your site, when they're reading your uh, social media posts, etc.? And you can take that further because you can look at, uh, imagine how would you talk to them if you were face to face? What is the conversation that you would like to have? Uh, imagining their responses as well. And then how would that conversation differ if it was done in writing? How would the structure, how would, how would the speed change? How would the response mechanism be different? And then how would one half of the conversation look? 
So, and this alludes to what I was saying about is your website listening? Is your website and your content, are you, are you having that conversation with them in an appropriate way for where they are on their journey and what they're looking for? You need, we all know that people will read differently online. I've got a little bit on, uh, on that in a moment. Um, but bear that in mind in that it's a, it's a different from that face-to-face -face conversation. But imagining that conversation can be an excellent starting point. So what's your subject? What are you writing about? And are you sure that you know what you're writing about? And that's that's a rhetorical question. I'll leave it there. But it's always a good one to ask yourself at the start. And how well do you know that subject? Uh, we have to have a little bit of humility uh, with a lot of these things. Uh, and working in agency, I'm, I'm commissioned to write on stuff that uh, often at the outset I don't know a lot about. But I will do an awful lot of research for it. But in terms of your own subject, ask yourself, what would your elevator pitch or what is your elevator pitch for that topic? And does that work? And can you base use that as a basis for where you go? And if not, do you need to build in extra time for research? Uh, I've mentioned research already, but it may be a case that you identify gaps that you want to fill or you want to update yourself on. But there's no harm in uh, saying, actually, I need uh, you know, I need to build in a, a couple of hours, a bit more Google time and, uh, and plug some gaps. If it's a complex subject, do you need to interpret it down to a level where it is understood by a greater number of people? You might be writing something quite niche for uh, a, a very specific audience. Sound has disappeared, I, I, I see in the chat. I don't know if uh, anyone else has got the problem. OK, uh, I'll carry on. Um, do you need to interpret the complex subject? So is there, uh, is there a refinement of the language and terminology that you use? How much do you need to write? Uh, how will it be broken down? I, again, I'll come on to a bit about structure, but think about uh, how much you need to put within a paragraph. Are you making a single point within a paragraph? Uh, or is it is it more complex argument? Just just take some time to think about how that uh, that flow will will work. Um, but importantly, as well as knowing how to where to start, um, do you know where to stop as well? I said earlier that it's it's easy to to carry on refining and refining, but um, people will only read a certain amount. So it is important to know where you want to stop talking or change the subject, uh, as well as how you get started with it. And lastly, the why. Why does or will this piece of uh, content exist? What is the overall objective of your piece? Again, it harks back to the journey that people are on, but you need to know why the, the answer to the, uh, the question why. And once you know that objective or objectives, that then asks the question, how will it serve it? What will its length be? How will you break it down into the sections? What are the arguments that you're going to put forward? Are you going to present both sides of an argument? Uh, are you know conclusions that you want to draw or do you want to open it up for uh, some form of discussion? And once that's planned out, make just reassess that structure. Again, make sure that that flow and structure work to uh, achieve the, the the objective, which is leads into writing with your goals in mind. And by that, I mean that might be your Google Analytics uh, conversion goals, or it may be more metaphorical in that you want to spark some uh, thoughts uh, or, or considerations in in people's minds. But have that constantly in the back of your mind, and it should actually form part of your structure framework that you've uh, you've started off with. And if you can't answer those why questions well enough, then you should be prepared to reconsider how you're tackling it. Uh, you, you probably don't need to start over all uh, all over again, but I would certainly um, think about how you're tackling it from the point of view of how do I justify the existence of this piece of content or does it need to work in a different way? 
So some hints and tips for getting underway. Uh, spark to light the fire. Uh, these are a number of websites that are excellent for uh, just getting you um, underway. The uh, the first few there relate to uh, the, the the sites where you can you may well know them, but it's uh, putting in an, a, a noun, a topic, a subject, and you can get um, titles, uh, similar content, ideas, inspiration all sorts of um, starting points. Uh, Medium.com, uh, I believe is, is um, I've got the right one, is about uh, shared articles. And that, again, read through, uh, take some inspiration. Uh, don't plagiarize, but take the uh, take your inspiration and ideas uh, from any of those. Uh, there's, a, there's a list of those and uh, many others uh, on our own blog on the website, uh, which is the bottom address there. So feel free to have a wander. I think there's around 40 suggestions there. So I've only picked a, a handful from them. But excellent places to uh, to get yourself uh, started. So I'll take a sip. So once you're underway, what about uh, keeping on writing, refining and distilling? So tone and voice, these are, these are a key parts that you need within your, you know, um, set, set them at the start, but keep them in mind as you go along. Remember to tell the story. Uh, human interest will always be a, a, an excellent hook uh, for a story and it will keep people interested. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people will um, on their sites talk about uh, how how their idea came about, how their business started, uh, their own history, as I did myself at the start. So uh, it's it's it is a a well recognised uh, hook for um, keeping getting and keeping people's interest. Uh, befriend the thesaurus, uh, the 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 impact that you can create from having uh, the variety. Uh, of of vocabulary, um, it, 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 it's it's to me it's 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 almost uh, inestimable that the the the, um, the power that you can create and the the extra readability that you can uh, generate from um, not being repetitive. It is it's as simple as that, uh, and and it will apply not just to the pieces that you're working on at the time, uh, increasing your word power. Uh, is 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 just a, a joy of life for me um, because the wonders of English language, uh, the 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 number of um, different ways you can say similar things, uh, I find it fantastic. Uh, but anyway, um, be precise with the terminology that you're using. Uh, a lot of people will get caught up in their own bubble. Uh, for example, the the most obvious of this is with your three letter acronyms. And the convention, uh, there, there, there are two uh, conventions on this, but they're, they're equally effective. Um, the point is that the first time that you use an acronym, uh, explain it. So either you can do as I've done there, put uh, the acronym and then explain it in full, or you can put it in full and then and then the acronym in brackets. But uh, I get I get deeply frustrated by the number of uh, pieces of content that I read where I find myself saying, hang on, that's that's the first time I've spotted that. Uh, I need to uh, I, I need to read back. Have I missed something? So please, please explain them uh, on at least the first uh, occurrence. Um, keep it succinct. There's there's no harm in when you get to your editing, just being quite harsh and saying, right, do I need that? Do I need that word? Do I need how can I? You know, it goes back to the thesaurus. Can I say it slightly differently uh, or slightly better? But keep it succinct. Uh, again, it goes back to how people um, read uh, you know, online as opposed to on the page. Um, 
make it flow within the structure, the structure that you established at the outset. But uh, a good reference there is how uh, a story arc works within a, a novel or, or a film. Um, you will find that there is a, an overarching arc, of course, but um, you'll have your, your beginning, middle and end. But within those, you will have smaller arcs, overlapping arcs. Think about how that works for you. Um, <laughs> I've just noticed in the chat, uh, I've, I've fallen foul of my own uh, stuff. SME, small, medium enterprise, uh, CIM, the Chartered Institute of Marketing. Um, be consistent with your tone. Um, and that tone, is, it may be educational, it may be instructive, uh, it may be entertaining, but be consistent with it. Inconsistency within that tone will disrupt. Uh, you will find that uh, you, you'll have you've seen it yourself that um, you you will um, the, the the emotion that you get from reading a piece can vary according to and you, you it will throw you and you will throw your reader as well. Uh, images and layout. Uh, again, I'm talking primarily about um, web pages here. That tone that I just mentioned. How does that work with your imagery if you have a um a professional instructive uh educational um tone going on how does that fit with the image you're using if you're using quite simplistic illustrations do those fit together similarly if you've got uh, an entertaining tone uh, you might be better off with illustrations rather than photography, for example. Uh, similarly, when you're referring to that imagery, uh, use use the correct terminology, whether it's photo or photograph, illustration. Um, but just you know, be consistent in how you're um, how you're referring to it. Please, please don't plagiarize. Um, it's it you know the, it, just from an ethical point of view. Uh, it's 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 unwelcome, um, but of course, in terms of the AI behind the search engines now, um, it will it will it will damage you. Uh, simple as that. Uh, and be aware of copyright uh, of images, um, especially, but uh, across the board, it is it is not. Um, it's a minefield that you just don't want to get into. Uh, but on the upside, you can take advantage of how a website works. Uh, the uh, think about how the links and anchors will work on a page and, again, what how you want to take people through on their journey through your website, um, the length of the pages below the fold, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've got a reference there to uh, the NN group. I found an awful lot of good stuff there, um, but the, uh, the, the um, specific point there is about how people read online how much they absorb of what you will put on the page how long they'll spend on the page etc cetera, etc cetera. and the image that i've used there is uh probably biggest part of 20 years old now but i think and there's still there's there's some debate as to how much uh it's still relevant but it's known as the f pattern of reading and it's based on heat maps from eye tracking surveys uh so done a few years ago but uh still some debate about uh, how those are still applicable in the in the mobile world as well as the um the monitor world um but the uh it, i think a, a lot of it still stays true uh it's definitely worth researching so editing Writing is a creative process, and therefore it's an iterative process. Uh, if you think you have got a piece of copy right the first time, uh, you haven't. It's as simple as that, because there will always be improvements that can be made, um, and that might be the content itself, it might be the length, um, it might be the tone. So you will benefit from revisiting the same piece at least a few times. Um, for me, I will write a piece uh, on day one, I will perhaps uh, read it again later in that day, but certainly uh, I will go back to it the following day and possibly a couple of times afterwards. Again, timescales are important, but uh, there is a lot of benefit to be had from literally sleeping on it and then going back, um, as I say, possibly a few times. 
when you come to editing, be prepared to be uh, brutal for it. Um, you will, you will sometimes. I've done it many times. I've looked at a piece and I thought that that doesn't work. Where was I going with that? Uh, and I will strike out whole paragraphs. Uh, find a methodology that works for you. Sometimes um, it, it, this is dictated by circumstances. But if you want, to, uh, if you're doing something on screen, make use of editing functions like tracking changes, review comments, strike through, etc. Um, but I will, I, I will also do a lot of this on paper as well as uh, on screen, um, and I'll mention that in a moment. So the details, grammar. Uh, please don't be intimidated by grammar there's been an awful lot about uh, grammar over the last 20 years i think mainly since um uh, eats shoots and leaves was published i think in 2003 um but it is there as a tool to help it is not there to hinder you or get in your way uh and if you don't feel confident about it and uh, I, i'm doing this on a regular basis um check uh up, update yourself um remind yourself just just boost the knowledge there is an awful awful lot online uh, and if you're in doubt check something and even if you're not in doubt check it anyway because chances are you'll learn something either for that moment or for the future um one of the best tools uh, and well known that's around is the uh, the grammarly uh, plugin extension um install it and use it but i will also say learn from it don't don't just um click on and accept the suggestions, look behind um, what it's correcting and why. Uh, and if again, if you need to go off and check elsewhere to get a better um, better understanding, uh, you can download it from Grammarly.com or the Chrome Web Store. I say there are many, many websites out there um, that are offering help and advice. But uh, in my research for this talk, I I found uh, I, I strayed across the ocean uh, to a lot of uh, US websites and found uh, quite a lot of variation in the rules. And of course, the web is, a, is an international uh, medium, but think about where your audience is situated and make sure that you're applying uh, correct grammar for your audience, your region, your culture, however you want to, to slice it up. Um, but just just make sure that uh, you're you're sticking within your realm. Uh, grammar and syntax. Um, you'll see from the illustration there, or the the, the photograph, um, the the confusion that can arise from uh, not getting it right. Um, a couple of points here that uh, often come up number styles lots of opinions around the the convention these days is that you would write the numbers one to ten as words and for 11 upwards you would write in digits which i think is a is a good baseline however sometimes i will use uh digits for one to ten because uh of perhaps sometimes the impact that i want to make i might want to emphasize a certain number and in terms of legibility uh the the actual digit itself will often have a uh, a stronger impact sentence structure uh how you how you position phrases within a structure can have a bearing and quite you know quite a lot of weight the example that i've got there is starts with only i saw the man but if i shift the only one space to the right i only saw the man or i saw only the man or i saw the only man you can see that the meaning there changes every single time. Now, that's quite an extreme example, but I would say uh, think about the order in which you're placing phrases. Um, another another good one is if you're using please, where do you put the please in the sentence? Um, that that can um, have quite an impact on the, 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 the subtle emotions that it ev evokes. So just think about how you're putting a sentence together with its phrases. And I would say that if this is something that you are encountering regularly, by all means, no matter the size of your organization, uh, create a, a small set of uh, uh, brand or language guidelines. It can be extremely useful, helps with the consistency, and again, update it regularly as, as time goes on. Punctuation, uh, the, the, the classic uh, punctuation can save lives, 
a significant difference between let's eat grandma and let's eat grandma. Um, you'll you'll see hopefully in the uh, the photo on the uh, on the page that uh, apparently uh, Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog. Um, inspiration and, and probably a criminal record as well. Um, but it's 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 important. You you can end up looking really quite foolish. Um, know when to use a colon or a semicolon. Lot of lot of uh, uh, convoluted rules around that, but use it appropriately. Um, know about your apostrophes and know about your apostrophes uses. When, where, when to, when not to. Uh, another classic: know when it's it's and when it's it's. Uh, I, I, I learned that many years ago and uh, uh, it, it stuck with me. Um, used correctly, punction will add gravitas, reassurance and clarity to your content. It, it, it shows people that you are paying attention. Uh, it reinforces the information that you're uh, putting out there and for the purposes of clarity, it as I say, uh, you may not be in the purpose in the business um, uh, of. Um, uh, so I've just seen Anne's, Anne's comment. Um, you may not be in the purpose of uh, business of saving lives, but uh, being clear is useful. Anne's question: uh, It's without the apostrophe is the uh, abstract equivalent of his or her. Uh, it's it's a possessive pronoun. Uh, it's with the apostrophe is a shortening of it is simple simple as that um the, the and, and most of the time because we have things like john's book john apostrophe s book uh people work on the basis that you need the apostrophe when it's the possessive but like i say think of its its as the equivalent of his or her so um its book um the dog chewed its tail would be its hope that clears that up uh say what you mean and mean what you say um the possibly the most uh, ambiguous painting of of all time uh there but avoid ambiguity uh, again the classic dogs must be carried on this escalator it took me half an hour to find a dog uh Jimmy Tarbuck's level of comedy there, but it makes a point. Uh, you are, you are, you you need to be clear. Uh, use adjectives appropriately. I'm a huge fan of uh, uh, of adjectives. Uh, they can they, they make, as I say, there a significant difference, but it could be a huge difference or a powerful difference. Um, but please do uh, use them freely and wisely. I would say. Um, time is finite again it goes back to how people behave on the web how they read so if you have a point to make get to it even get to it first and then back it up uh, be careful with humor uh, as i'm finding as i go along today um, but in writing unless you have established that style quite clearly uh, and your tone, and it is um, perhaps even the, the core of your own site. Be careful with it because so much can be lost or misconstrued within writing. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, it, 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 it it can be full of pitfalls. So be very careful with it. Uh, and at all stages, whatever whether you're when you're writing, when you're editing, when you're proofing, whatever it might be. Make sure that your brand and your personality, the personality of your site, your product, etc. Make sure that that is coming through. Is this our voice? Is this how we would speak to those customers that I referred to earlier? Um, is that is it a representation, a true representation of who you are? Right. I, I see the time slipping, so we'll we'll, we'll speed up a little. Um, proofreading. Uh, short and simple tips never ever proof on screen your mind works differently um, print it out spend the money on the paper and the ink and it will it will pay you back um, a spell check does not do all the work for you um, it will do some but many times um, I've fallen 
almost fallen foul of the, uh, for example, form and from, uh, which it will not uh, not always pick up. If you can, uh, don't proof your own work. From the moment you start writing, you are uh, almost too close to what you've written uh, and you will not read back uh, what you have seen. But if that's unavoidable, uh, I would suggest that you always proof aloud. And uh, if you can if you can bear the, the slight embarrassment of sounding a bit foolish, uh, read it backwards as well. Um, probably a sentence or a paragraph at a time, uh, but it, it can be extremely useful in picking up uh, not necessarily the sense check, but certainly typos um, in, in, within, within specific words, individual words. Uh, if you can, get proofreading done by someone else uh, who is suitable for both the content, the understanding of it, uh, and the intent of your of your content. What what are you uh, what are you trying to achieve? And they should feed back to you on whether that has been achieved. Uh, be specific about if you're if you're getting someone else to do it. Be specific about what is being proofed. So, are you asking them to look for typos, in which case corrections are needed? Are you asking for a sense check, um, which would uh, involve them coming back with comments, or are you asking asking them to possibly even rewrite sections, in which case you would expect new or amended copy. But if you set them on the right path, they will come back to you with the right stuff. You don't want to find that someone has rewritten your entire copy when you just wanted to check them to check for a few typos. Publishing. Uh, again, primarily talking here about online publishing. Um, know your software and it's and the set the specs um that that's that's a fundamental piece and if you are working uh through a developer make sure that you are clear on what you're wanting from them and what they are wanting from you uh a very useful tip that i found um this was with um offline print publishing but uh can apply online as well when you are working with a very restricted space such for example a text box um, we were working with universities printing their prospectuses which were often scattered with um testimonials from students but those testimonials needed to fit into a very specific text box size so rather than say uh we would like a, a word count of 30 words we actually specified a character count, which made a huge difference because uh, we were virtually guaranteed every single time that we would get the right length of copy in there. Um, specifying a word count can lead to much more variation. A character count is far more specific. So back to your software. Um, make sure you set your language correctly. The number of times that we probably had to reset our Microsoft Word to uh, uh, UK English rather than American English. I've lost count, but uh, make sure you've done that. Be aware of the layout on the page. Make your text legible. Think about using uppercase and when to use it. Uh, italics, better resolution uh, monitors these days, but please think about your know, use of that and also the font, whether it's a serif font, sans serif, uh, as I've got here. Um, and because of how people read online, make your text scannable. There's a huge amount about this online, so I won't go into depth on it, about it, but uh, Google that and you will find plenty of advice on how to make it scannable, layout, etc. Be aware of variations between devices and test as much as you can. Um, mobile, tablet, uh, etc. A responsive site is great, but it's it's not it's not the be all and end all. Uh, the eye tracking that I showed you earlier, again, research that. Uh, very very useful for understanding the structure, overall structure, and down to quite specific levels. And go back to your framework to reference uh, a, the sensible structure. Is it working? Is it flowing? After all your editing and proofing, does it still fulfill that framework. Secondly, on publishing, use lists uh, appropriately as and where, and make sure uh, you're using a, a sensible bullet point. There are numerous types of bullet points out there, but I find that actually, um, for example, a solid black dot seems to carry more weight than just a circular dot. Uh, 
or an outlined white dot, as it were. Um, so that there is a there is a almost a, an unspoken um, sentiment that comes comes across with different bullet points. Uh, let your text breathe. Um, use the white space wisely. It's often the uh, forgotten part. It is probably more relevant uh, on print, but I think it still applies uh, online. Um, I said mentioned using the preview function. Check what you have got on the page, then check it again. Uh, it's very easy after all of the the probably lengthy process to rush to the finishing line, um, which which is fine in the Olympics. But uh, I would say just take the time to make sure it is absolutely as you want. And part of that checking involves making sure that it integrates with the uh, the entire site. If, if it's a, a, a page that people have clicked onto, does it fulfill their expectations? Um, is it what they're looking for? Um, and and you, know, you don't want them just bouncing straight off the page, for example. Uh, and remember that no piece that you write acts in isolation, and that, that, that applies across any, uh, any medium. Um, but remember that it is, uh, it, it's not gonna be read in isolation and its, uh, its content doesn't work in isolation either. Think about how it integrates with, with all other parts that uh, you've, you've written or are pre-existing. Uh, once, it's, once it's out there, remember to update, uh, check your content and update it regularly as required. Uh, I've listed just a few examples here of some of the reasons that, uh, some of the catalysts that might cause you to, to update. Um, product development, new products, changes in a product range, products being discontinued uh, can, uh, can have an impact. Uh, something more strategic, such as your branding, uh, may have changed. And that, that applies if you're within your guidelines, you have a tone of voice, um, not just uh, do we have a different logo. Uh, external influences, such as uh, legislation, uh, political developments, that kind of thing. Signs of the times, uh, which would be, as I said, not just fads, but um, movements such as you know, currently around plastic packaging, climate change, etc. cetera. Um, very, very high level stuff, some of those, but they will often filter down to have an impact on many different uh, sites in many different ways. Uh, technology changing all the time, so that will uh, that will almost certainly have a bearing on what you need to say or how you're saying it. And of course, uh, crisis. Uh, I, I won't mention um, current crises, but uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's a well known impetus for change, and obviously, of course, um, can often mean you know, quite urgent changes. So, uh, where from here? Uh, just a few useful websites i mentioned grammarly.com but also grammar.com uh very good for a very wide range of basics and fundamentals uh thesaurus.com dictionary.com two sister sites and and i i recommend even you know over a coffee break uh have a wander around thesaurus.com and and just you know add a few more words uh words to your um vocabulary great great stuff uh, also, the Content Marketing Institute uh, has a lot of very useful stuff, uh, and not just about visiting the sites, of course. Uh, I think nearly all of them are on social media, um, and, and and also people like Susie Dent, um, Giles Brandreth, et cetera, often good for um, anecdotes, tidbits, that that kind of thing. Um, just, just a little bit of inspiration rather than pure content, perhaps. So, as I mentioned, a little bit of uh, technical stuff because all of this writing does, uh, again, as I said, doesn't act in isolation. Um, one of the things that uh, is, is that I have found for myself is, am I better off starting with my key phrases that from my key phrase research, or do I start off with my copy? Uh, I would say go whichever works best for your style and your site. For me, uh, I like to know uh, the key phrases and then work around that, but I don't have them as specific uh, points that I have to uh, have, have at the center point. I will write copy that I know can incorporate it because I've got them in the back of my mind. Making them, uh, getting the right level of them 
then comes at the next stage of the process when I'm refining it. But if you like, I write from the heart first with something in my brain at the time. Um, search volumes and the form of the key, key phrases will also have an influence. Sometimes you'll find that the key phrases uh, that people are using, uh, they won't obviously follow a, a natural English form. So think about how those can actually be uh, utilized and turned into a, uh, a, a sensible sentence, phrase, etc., within within your copy. And the classic is, you know, do not stuff with uh, the keywords. Uh, it, it doesn't make for good um, readability. Uh, it's blindingly obvious what you're doing. Uh, people will see it. Uh, AI will see it. Uh, so keep with your keep a, the flow and the tone natural and work the key phrases in. So uh, putting it all together, uh, to say choose your starting point. But these are, these to me are the three elements that you have to have in mind. Um, what is your should we say pure unoptimized content writing from from the heart? Uh, your SEO techniques are obviously part of it, and the software as well. I would I would say is is a uh, a significant influence. Um, not not the, the the main one, but something to bear in mind. But whichever works best for you choose one of those probably not the software but choose one of those as your starting point to come up with your finished article but always bear all three in mind uh, as you're going along whichever one you start from so some final thoughts um words have power please please handle with care uh that it is um we, we often underestimate the influence of, of what we're saying and, and how we're saying it, et cetera. Your muse is real. Uh, find a time and place that suits you. Uh, for me, uh, it's usually, um, you, you don't listen to this bit, Anne, but it's usually from about 11 onwards. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm not working between nine and 11, but I find that uh, literally the, the brain and the creative uh, part will kick in sort of mid morning. That works for me. Some people it works first thing, some people it's even into the evening, but uh, you will find, uh, say, a time and a place, an environment that suits you. Strike the balance, find your voice, bear in you have there's a lot of things that i've covered to to bear in mind but putting all of those together make sure that it is your voice as i said that's coming across your your personality your sentiment you know the objectives you know the audience your it's your responsibility to bring all of that together and make sure it is genuine and authentic uh, Keep learning, like I say, uh, visits to uh, thesaurus.com, but also sensitive to uh, evolving language. Uh, keep keep your ear to the ground, um, and and you, you will you will learn an awful lot. I I was talking to a colleague the other day about uh, some clothing descriptions, and she uh, she said that snazzy is is a, a word of the moment to describe clothing, and I said, well, I. I remember that from a few years ago. <laughs> so it, you know, uh, what goes around comes around, etc. Uh, as you carry on, you will improve. It will. Uh, you'll get there. Uh, it'll take time, but above all, just enjoy it. And that uh, is. I, I've I've taken probably a bit too much time. So over to you, Anne. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was really interesting. There's some very very um, some good banter going on in the chat today. We've had all sorts of things about punk rock. Um, somebody needs to speak to Sarah. Um, <laughs> uh, use of images, copywriting. Uh, there were some comments about um, uh, some of the terms that you use in asking you to explain it. So really interesting. Um, okay. I know it's I know it's just coming up to ten o'clock, and a lot of people do leave at exactly ten o'clock. So I just wanted to do a couple of offers um, with regards to the conference and the survey that we're doing. So um, if you don't already know, um, we are doing a benchmark survey. Um, we, we're putting an initial head, uh, deadline on this on uh, for um, Monday so that we can publish a few results. Um, but if I bring that up, you'll be able to click on it. And the whole idea of the survey is that if you can give us a little bit of information about uh, what you're planning to do with your marketing, particularly if you've got a marketing team, if you're on your own, um, you know, some of the questions might not be quite so applicable. 
but um, please fill this in um, so that we can you can benchmark yourself. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll also publicize it at the conference and get a larger pool of people. But I have got some really interesting results. And we're really trying to understand what's happened between this year and last year and what people's attitudes towards marketing is, uh, you know, as a result of COVID. Uh, and then if you haven't already booked your place, um, the conference is next Tuesday. Um, we've got a brilliant uh, lineup. There's actually two streams. Um, this will take you through to the advanced session uh, with um, our suppliers and guest speakers. We've got a number of quite well-known software companies like SEMrush, SimilarWeb, uh, Yoast, which is the main WordPress plugin. Um, uh, I've forgotten the other one. There's another one that's coming. It's completely gone out of my head. Uh, and then there's some other guest speakers talking about all sorts of other sort of more advanced subjects. And then in addition, if you're new to um, uh, Annika is doing a um, an introductory session. Um, so there's sort of like an introduction to uh, PPC, introduction to um, PR and contact marketing, um, and sort of how you integrate those things. So there's a whole load of subjects for people that are new and you can flick between the two. Um, so please register for those as well. Um, we aren't doing a Friday seminar next week, a webinar next week, because obviously uh, the conference is on Tuesday. There's a lot to be doing, be done on uh, um, next week because everybody's really busy and involved in this. Um, but but um, you can also see the agenda if you look at that URL there. Could somebody from the Annika team stick that link in the chat, please? Um, basically, uh, you know, we'd love you to join us uh, if you. If you can make it, that would be brilliant. Um, and we restart the webinars with Holly uh, a week on Friday. Um, she's going to uh, be doing her session then. Um, and obviously, we'll send out the um, emails and invites. So hopefully, that's everything. I don't think there's any other comments. Um, there's a few people saying thank you. Um, yeah, don't plagiarize content. Um, a lot of the stuff we've been doing is making the content fit to the design. I think this is going to become more and more common, particularly as people start to use different types of WordPress um, sites, which is something called Content Blocks or Gutenberg or Gutenberg. I think that's how you pronounce it. So I, I do think there'll be um, uh, lots of interesting things going on with content going forward. Uh, Trevor's asked, unfortunately, you can't get to the conference. Yes, please register. We'll be sending the recordings out. What's going to happen is, is it will be recorded in one day. Um, so I'm hosting uh, Leicester Digital Live with the guests. And then Jess is hosting uh, the uh, Ask Annika, which is the introduction um, session. And then we'll, we'll cut the video up into individual sections. And then that will go back onto our resource page on the website and we'll load up all the PDFs as well. So uh, normally we send out uh, this video about this afternoon, but after the conference, we will need to cut and slice and dice it so that it's more sort of consumable chunks. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be a great day. There's over 500 people registered for the conference already, which is, um, which is brilliant. So thanks very much, everybody. Uh, unless anybody's got any questions, we're quite happy to hang around a little bit longer. Um, have a great weekend and uh, we'll see most of you on Tuesday. Thank you very much. And thanks, Mark. <laughs> thank, thank you. I, I'm sorry it was uh, a, a tad over long, but. Uh, no, 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 it was perfect. Perfect timing. Uh, no, it was absolutely fine. Ah, Punk Rock Sarah, email me. That's that is very interesting. Sarah is our, one of our other um, uh, content and PR writers. She's been working for Annika for a very long time. And, uh, yeah, she's a big punk rock fan. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm sure you guys should uh, catch catch up. Okay, I don't think we're getting any more questions. So I'm going to close the webinar down. Uh, thanks very much, guys. And we'll speak to you. Uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.